Well, let's go ahead and walk through the process of installing Nagios. So I have a Rocky Linux installation and I am now on the Nagios website. So looking at it, you can see there are a bunch of things. There is the Nagios XI, Nagios Log Server, Nagios Network Analyzer, Nagios Fusion, all these different products. And the most important one we want is actually the Nagios Core which doesn't really display here. You can click on the downloads and you can navigate around and you can see, finally you see this Nagios core download. Unfortunately, when you get to the Nagios core download, it keeps trying to redirect you back to their commercial project with the product, which is Nagios XI, but you click on download and then it has this little pop-up where it wants you to sign up basically um, you could put in real information if you wanted, um, or you could put in something that's less real. Uh, and eventually that takes you to this page right here, where it says, um, thanks for the download, or whatever. And then it gives you this information right here, and you have this link. So I can click on this Nagios 451 tar gz. So I'm going to go ahead and download that. And then a little bit lower, you can see the installation instructions. So you can click on that and then it describes how you are supposed to go about doing your installation. There are two steps. The first step is to install a Nagios core from, we're new from source, or you can actually download individual packages and hope that it works out well. All right, so let's go ahead and look at how we do the source installation. So I'll click on my activities and pop up a terminal. It should have downloaded the Nagios core software by now. And then I will look in my directory and you can see there is a downloads directory here. I'll go into that. Let's go ahead and make this a little bit bigger. Um, terminal preferences and down under this unnamed profile, I can switch my font size to be a little bit bigger. So I'll click it to custom font and I will change the font to be let's try 16 and select that which makes it really big but that will make it easier to see let's go ahead and close that right here okay so they have this downloads directory and I can go into this downloads directory and do a directory listing and you can see there is a Nagios 451 tar gz thing here so in order to open that i'll do tar xvf so or expand verbose and file and i do Nagios right here and tab and it expands it all out into this directory now i have the directory with the expanded files and i go into Nagios and I can see information here and all this source code. Let's jump back over to the instructions and look at what it says to do next. So installing it from source, you has all this information about how to get it and which things you need. And it says you're going to need certain packages installed. Um, one of those things you want to do is make sure you have all the required packages. Now, I am using Rocky, which is a Red Hat based distribution. And so I want to make sure I have all of these packages right here. Now I am closest to rel 8 slash 9. So I can use this command right here. And I will just copy that. Let's see if I can paste it here. And then since I'm not root, I do sudo and type in my password and let it download these packages and do the installation. Now these packages are required in order to make it work because they all do important things. You need to have compilers built in. You need to have your wget to request things. You need to have PHP for your web pages when you're interacting with the services and clicking on through things. And so you want all these things installed and in place. All right. So now that is all installed. And then you look at the next one, it says, well, you also need this one, open SSL develop, because you're going to be developing 
SSL based things. So I'll go ahead and copy that one right here. And I'm not root again, so I'll do sudo and right click this, paste there, and install this package. And then it asked me to update my system. So I can do a, a DNF or even a yum update minus Y command as root with a pseudo command in front of it. And it says I'm perfectly up to date. I'm good to go. All right. So the next thing it says is you want to compile this. So I have the source code already. I'm going to compile it. So I go into the directory that I downloaded into, I do period slash configure and then make all. So if I look at my directory listing, you can see a bunch of different files here and the configure, the period dot configure right here is going to actually look at the configuration information here and it's going to check my machine to see what stuff I have installed and then build the installation instructions in the make file. Uh, based on what is on my system. So things like compilers and stuff like that. So I do configure and then it checks all kinds of things, make sure I have everything in place. And at this point, if I'm missing something, it will probably tell me what I'm missing. So that's good. Um, so now I'm going to do make all. So if you look at the directory listing again, you will see that um, well, there should be some make file thing here. This make file was just generated based on the make file in information for this in thing right here. And I have to make all, there is an all instruction inside of make, which in the make file, which tells it how I'm supposed to compile and build all the components for Nagios core. So I'm going ahead and building this. There we go. It is all done. Next thing I do is I want to go ahead and make all of the users and groups that are required. So I'll copy that one and I'll paste this. Make install user groups. It'll probably want me to have root. So I'll do a sudo in front of that. And it creates the groups. Um, user and group stuff. I now add this Nagios um, group to the Apache user so that Apache can do stuff here. And I need to also use the sudo command in front of that. All right, so now that is taken care of. Next step is to install the binary files. So this will put different files into the correct directories and the correct locations, and that'll be nice. So do use that same make file with a install. I uh, might need to do a sudo in front of that. And it goes ahead and puts things into the correct locations. Now, there are some other things you want to pay attention to here. It has this make init or install init and make install command mode and make install config. Now the make install init will put your initialization scripts into your systemd locations, which allows you to do things like use the, your systemctl command in order to add these processes because Nodios runs as a background process and runs and does stuff. If you look at the install mode thing, this installs and configures permissions on the directory for holding the external command file. And this make install config install sample configuration files in this user local Nagios etc directory. Now you want to be paying attention to where this is located because you need to actually make configuration files in there. So if I do a directory listing right now on the user local Nagios etc directory, there is no directory. But in Nagios, you can see there are other things here. So bin, libexec, 
stuff like that. And these are where you're going to be finding some of the binaries that are going to be running and running the Nagios service. So if we jump back to the instructions, it says, well, you're going to need to install your daemon init or a command mode thing. And so we're going to assume we are this one right here. We're going to make install daemon init, which is probably not the command that they want you to run, but we'll go ahead and run this command anyway and see what it does. Oh, I guess it did work. That's good. So it did put the service in there and you can see it's right there in the uh, lib system D system Nagio service thing. And so you can now use that service. Um, and I guess you didn't need to use the init or install init right there, which is what I figured it would do. All right. So there you go. Um, now you want to enable your Apache web service. So, once again, you paste that, make sure you have the sudo command in front, and you have Apache running, well, actually, it'll run on boot time. Apache isn't necessarily running right now at this time, and we won't worry about that right now. All right, now you want to have this thing right here, run this next command, copy that, and paste this, once again, a sudo command in front of that, and it goes ahead and it does an installation of some files it, it, you know sets the group and other things like that for these commands right here it changes the permissions form you also want to make sure you have your basic sample configuration file now this is important it is just a sample it's not the actual configuration you need to make that configuration yourself but sudo and run this paste right here you can see that it puts files into this user local Nagios etc directory. So that directory has been created. And in here you can see how, by looking at these files, you can see how to do different things. How to observe things. One of the things you want to pay attention to is the localhost.cfg file. Um, they also have a, a uh, windows.cfg and other things like that, which are used to give examples of how you would look at a windows server or monitor a windows server printer you know printers and switches so they have these templates in there so we'll go ahead and do that next we want to make our web configuration so that allows um, or tells apache how you want to be able to see nagios so we'll go ahead and paste that and do a sudo command in front of that and it copies into the etc apache2 sites enabled nagios.conf file so if you look into that directory etc apache um, actually http so apache2 doesn't seem to be the one that it is. Um, so it actually it should be an etc httpd and conf.d. If you look in here, you can see that there is a nagios.conf file which has information on how it is supposed to find nagios. So let's go ahead and take a look at that file. You can use uh, nano or less, let's type less. Take a look at that. And it looks like there is nothing there because I didn't pick the right one. There we go. Nigel's. Oh. All right. Now you can see um, it has different information about where things are stored. For example, your user password file is going to be stored right here. And so when you create a user, it's using your basic Apache user authentication, username, password stuff, which we'll add later. Um, and you can see just different information about where it has files. So if you type in localhost on your web browser, so localhost slash Nagios, it will redirect you to the user local Nagios share directory. And that is where you are going to be running stuff. 
and then you can see okay well this is how we have configured that directory run in apache um, who's allowed and things like that so it's allowing from everyone and things like that but you do need to have a user so it's going to use your basic uh, authentication well pop up a username and password um, prompt there when you first connect to it that's assuming it's running which it is not but that's okay all right so now I have the web comp installed and the next step is to configure our firewall so we want to allow port 80 through now you can either do a port 80 thing or you could do um, just HTTP so I'll do a firewall com cmd add service equals HTTP do a pseudo in front of that and that will allow the HTTP through the firewall of course when the firewall restarts for any reason like restarting restarting machine it will disappear so you want a permanent so now it's permanently it's put into the configuration file so it's there you can check your firewall to see how it is set right now uh, list all and you can see that we do have HTTP getting through the firewall right now we also have SSH and we are also allowing our DHCP client to get through we can also go ahead and um, if we wanted to add a service HTTPS we could do that too if we're running on HTTPS um, which is a good idea but just keep that in mind okay so now that we have that in there we want to create our Nagios admin user account this is the one that can log in to Nagios and the way you do it is you use the HT pass WD command with a minus C for create and in this file is where you're putting the Nagios user and so it's going to try to create a Nagios user it'll prompt you for a password and then it will create a user there so we're going to go ahead and create that paste right here and do a sudo command in front run this and then it asks me for a password to create this Nagios admin so I create a super secret password and now it has added that password if we do a cat of this file right here we can see what actually happened you can see that it created a username and a password pair so this is the salted hash of that password all right so the next thing we want to do is we want to start our service so we want to turn on the web server and make sure that's running and we also want to start our Nagios service so as you might remember we did enable the HTTPD service and now we're going to actually start it and the reason we start it now is because we have our Nagios configuration Nagios.com file in place so we can it'll read it when it starts up so we do sudo systemctl start HTTPD and that will start up the Apache service we also want to start up our Nagios service and at this point we probably want to also enable that because I don't believe we enabled it earlier so now we should have the Nagios server up and running we should also have Apache running and so then when we go to Apache slash whatever the um, slash Nagios directory it will redirect over to the Nagios service running or the Nagios directories so Nagio service is running in the background and actually doing the monitoring and things like that. All right. So now we can test it. So we can go over to our location, whatever that is. Um, it says point to the IP uh, your, of your server. Um, you can just do local host. Um, and we can take care of that. So we will fire up our web server again and this time we will type in localhost slash nagios 
and then it prompts me for a username and password. And you start thinking, wait, what, what username and password do I have? Well, you just created Nagios admin, and then the password was your super secret password. And you sign in, and let's go ahead and save that, even though that's a really bad idea. And then you can see um, information here. So services is all of the services that are on the local host comp file that you saw in the uh, when we were putting things in the etc directory there and you can see information about current load and stuff like that because it is now getting ready to try doing things the problem is that it's finding problems where it doesn't have these plugins you can see this a uh, failed error no no such file or directory and it's trying to run user local nagios lib exe check load that's the plugin it's trying to run for this check load service. I can click on the service right here and it says same thing. This is it's just not there. We don't have the plugin enabled. So at this point, we can install the plugins. And that's where we go over to this. We go over to the GitHub location. Let's see. And, well, before we do that, it actually wants us to make sure we have other packages installed. And we can go ahead and just um, install these ones right here. Make sure we have everything in place. Um, I like putting a net SNMP and net SMP utils and all those things there because that does make it so you can use your plugins. So let's go ahead and run these. Paste these first. And then we'll uh, download the... Um, GitHub repository and build that all. All right, let's get that as well. Paste that and unknown repo power tools. Well, that's okay. We don't need to anyway. All right, um, let's see. Downloading the source. So it says you can download this source right here. Um, you could also go to the GitHub location. Actually, let's just do this one. This would be easier. We downloaded um, wget earlier, uh, and that was, um, well, the wget was much earlier in the first set of downloads we did. But let's go ahead and get this one right here. So I'll cd out of this directory back into my downloads directory, and then I will run this command right here which will do a, a download of this Nagios plugins.tar.gz file. And so then we got Nagios plugins and we can expand that tar xvf Nagios plugins. And we get our plugin stuff right there. Then it says compile and install. So you need to go in that directory, you run the setup you run the configure, the make, and the make install. So set up, configure, make, and make install. So we have a directory listing. Go to Nagios plugins. And we are now into this right here. We do the setup. So that was in tools. Set up. And... Then we do our next command, which was our configure, then our make, and our make install. So configure. Once again, it's checking to make sure I have compilers and other things in place, and which compiler I have, too. And then once this is taken care of, I can go ahead and run my make, which will build the default stuff and then they, then I can install it. This does take a little bit of time, as you can see. So make, and it's building a lot of this stuff, building all these pieces. And when you're doing everything up to make, you're building as your own user. When you do the make install, you're gonna be copying things into directories that only root has access to, so make, install does need to be run as root so sudo make install 
and it will copy all of these things in place. So at this point, I should be able to use the plugins. Now, if we remember correctly, the plugins were in that etc or next to that etc directory in that user local nigeos directory that we saw above so we got user local nigeos lib exe so let's go over to that directory user local nigeos and you can see this directory listing if you look in the lib exe c directory you can see a list of plugins each of these plugins is a program that you can run by yourself i mean on the command line right there so let's go ahead and just go in that directory lib exe c and let's try one of these things so if i wanted to do a um let's see check i uh, http if I do period slash check HTTP, it gives me a list of information. Now, we don't necessarily know how all of these pieces work, but this usage will help you. And so if I do check HTTP, then I try minus, minus I. And I try uh, 127.00.1. It tells me forbidden. So it does do something important. It says, well, I can't go to that web page directly. Um, but it does allow me to try hitting it. And then the Apache web server is responding. And it does give response time and things like that. Um, if I wanted to actually request something more specific then that could be added to that as well um, i'm not familiar with this particular plugin and so i'm not sure how it all works but this should allow me to do some checks at this point um, you can restart the nagio service if you want so you do system ctl uh, restart nagios well, let's cancel that i want to use a pseudo there sudo and then it will go through and it'll start doing its doing its rechecking if i go back over this nagios thing right here and i jump back to um, services you can see there's a list of services here and you can see these warnings are changing and part of that is because some things are now in place and some things are not if i try going over to this uh um, the http one the reason that one's having a failure is most likely because there is no default web page in the directory. So the way you'd solve that is you would uh, go over to var uh, www http nope. oh, HTML. And inside of here it needs to have a default web page otherwise it will do this forbidden thing. And so I could do uh, uh, sudo nano index.html and create a default web page. And it doesn't have to be anything important, just do a web page. I mean, it could be actually it could be just a blank text file, probably. But I could just type in something here. I could do a header and, and a body and all that stuff. But I would just say blank, blank web page all right well actually no that's good we'll just keep it that way all right now um, the next time it tries doing that check it should come back with something better than a forbidden thing because it should be fine all right now what if you wanted to monitor some other machine how would you do that well let's go back over to our user local nagios directory structure and we can see lots of different different files here let's go into the etc directory you can see there are a bunch of things here and we want to look at the nagios.cnf file so I'll do um, sudo nano nagios 
cnf and you can see there is a bunch of things here it says well our log file is here and these are some other things that you can have and if you wanted to turn on this windows thing you could switch thing printer you can turn them on localhost is turned on already so it's already monitoring localhost and then i like to turn on this server directory configuration directory that way you can have a separate configuration file for each server you want to monitor and that's user local nigos etc servers so you have to create a directory called servers so x x out of here and it's in this directory that i create a new one so make dir servers but you got to do that as root all right so now there is a servers directory let's go ahead and change the ownership sudo ch own nagios nagios servers and i'll go into that servers directory at this point i can create a server configuration for a particular server so let's say i wanted to monitor and make sure that google was up and running maybe that's not a good one to choose but you could choose that if you wanted to so let's go ahead and do that so i'll do that with a nano sudo nano and i will call this google.cfg and then in this you have to define the host so i got define host open curly brace and go ahead and do a close curly brace and inside of it i'm going to use uh, my generic host with semicolon the host name is going to be it's the uh, www.google.com and i will have a an alias for this which would be google and uh, i need an ip address for this so address and let's go ahead and exit out for now and let's do an ns look up on www.google.com and you can get this ip address right here that should work um let's go here tab over middle button there we go and then uh let's do a max check attempt Uh -oh. it's not lining up so I get my OCD will kick in now and I will fix it and the max check attempts is how many times it'll check before it says yeah it's just it's just down um, and then I want to check command so I want to check host Let's see check host what is it host alive and i'm gonna put this in the host groups of linux servers all right so I have a host defined. Now I'm going to define each of the services that I'm going to be looking at on that machine. So define service. And once again, open and close curly braces. This service is use. And it'd be generic service. And I'm going to have a host name of my see www.google.com and the service I'm going to be using service is HTTP colon or something like there and then 
I'm going to have a check command. And this will be um, check HTTP. So I'm just going to be checking to see if their HTTP is up. And I don't know if Google actually has HTTP up because they might just be strictly HTTPS. But that's okay. We're going to go ahead and do that. And let's add one more service just so we can see how to do it. Define service. Let's do SSH because I think that they use SSH. Use uh, generic service. Um, host name. Google.com and service description is SSH and check command. Oops, check command is check SSH. Did I forget my closed curly brace? Uh, Paris, I did. All right. Um, now we are ready to go ahead and exit out. Um, if we remember, um, the configuration files are normally read when we start a service. Um, I can go ahead and restart this service right now. sudo systemctl restart nagios. Apache can stay running because it's just the front end to the nagios back end. But the Nagios will start to look at things. This has not checked Google yet, most likely. But if I go over to services, if I did everything correctly and it doesn't crash, then I can see that now we've got a www.google.com and it has these services listed. They are pending and they are scheduled for when they're going to be checked. So it's got a uh, basically a date and time for when those services are going to be checked. And you can have it for every server you want to monitor, you can do that. And you can also turn off the local host if you don't want that one as well. So I can click on Google right here. I can see uh, it says that it appears the host is up. So it has checked the host. Um, probably a little ping test. Uh, if I go back over to services, you can see it's still pending. And then in a little while, you know, maybe in the next uh, few minutes or something like that, it should check it to see if it's actually up. You can see also that all the rest of these services on my localhost have gone up, uh, including the HTTP because I added that blank page there. And so now it comes back with a valid thing saying it's fine. This uh, page doesn't refresh automatically, so you have to click on this services button right here. And you can see now it's checked and said, okay, the HTTP is up. It hasn't checked the other one over here the SSH but if I click services now it will be pretty close and you can see the durations are upgrading updating every time I click on this button indicating how long that how long maybe until it's you know it's been up or how long they think it's been up and there you go so I hope this gives you an idea on how to set up Nodios how to get it working what you need to do in order to get services up and going. Um, and from here, you should be able to just log in, check things, and see if it's working. The next thing you probably want to look at, if we go out of this directory, if you go into uh, Nagios, Nagios, you can scroll down through this uh, file and you can see there's information in here. Um, lots of information about how it's doing things. And you also want to be able to configure it maybe to provide warnings because right now you can you can go there. It sends information and and things like that. But you can look at other, other things to so read through this. Just figure out what it does. Um, and look at all these different settings. Maybe there's too many settings, but there are quite quite a few settings. They kind of go on forever. Um, 
and then look at the resource.cfg file as well. Um, but you probably need to actually have permissions. So you can see this one right here. Um, it tells you information like where it's getting stuff. So just be familiar with these things. Um, also look in the objects directory. Uh, if you go to objects, take a look at the Linux one. So nano on the, actually the local localhost.cfg file. Oops. Nano. You can see information about how it has like a Linux server group thing or Linux server. And then it has a group right there, Linux servers, which we created. Um, if you wanted to create other groups, you could do that as well. Um, just set those up so you know what you're doing. You can also look at the contact one. Contact. This one is important because it gives information about how it will send emails to you if something goes down. And so you can go ahead and modify the email address right there. And then make sure you have your postfix server or whatever server up and running as well. And so it can forward messages to you. Anyway, I think that's about it.